Hey everyone, this is Green Magic Man. Today we're going to adjust the valves on a ZX-60E. So there's a heat shield here, and there's only two bolts, and it was easy. I just moved it out of the way. Eight bolts here, you can leave the spark plugs in. I'd like to leave my throttle cables here. Anyway, that's loose. So ram air tube number two, coming out now. Oh, there's something in the way. It's marvelous engineering. All right, second ram air tube out. It helps have bad music on and you can't see shit. Always helpful. Oh, come on. So elegant. So this is a 19 millimeter. We have one, turn it clockwise to the T14 meets the uh, marking on the crankcase. So this is your indicator right here. This guy, that one. That's just there to show your timing. And this is close to where you want it. So you want to put the T mark where this, this hash is, right there. That's about right. It doesn't have to be exact as long as you mark your chain well. So that's right on. I'm going to show you, like, this is where you want to turn it to top dead center. You'll see there's an intake IN mark here, which matches right up with this face. And there's an EX mark right over on the other side. So here's your feeler gauge. This is uh, actually the right one for this. You want to insert that in there. That one's a 0.7. This just gives you a little wider shot.
Next step is to remove the bearing caps, which is this big thing here. You have one on each side. So you got to remove both of these to get down to the camshafts. Remove them. And you'll see there's numbers right there. Number 16. So that's the first one you're going to undo this bolt right there. It's a 10 millimeter. Right in there. And you want to just crack this apparently just like a half turn only. cap and there's uh, a o-ring here and then there's this little guy which is pretty stuck so I'm gonna leave it but I'm gonna pull out that o-ring so I don't lose it actually maybe I'll leave that one there too and these are your spark plug o-rings which they do recommend you to take out but it looks pretty solid I think I'm gonna leave them in there Try this other one. Give it a little whack with a mallet. Let's see if it did anything. There we go. You can see uh, both these dowels are still here. This one I could take out maybe. Well, there you have that step anyway. Sparing caps removed. Next, we're going to take out the sprocket and then the camshafts. Next up, you're going to want to remove your CCT. This right here. So you want to take out this, this bolt here on the end first. And then remove this whole thing. There's a spring in there and a rod. And then you take the housing out, which is these two bolts right there. So I'll do that next.
So here's we're setting the CCT. There's the spring stuff. Press this, that little guy, and push in this plunger. And then you turn it upside down, turn it in hand, and it will fall out. So I'm going to press this and push in the plunger. Yep. Turn it upside down. Something's going to fall out, supposedly. Huh. There's theories here that the slack is going to tighten up on its own because the marks were right and as the crank pulls it's going to change it. Crank it down here. Ooh, that looked good. Sounds good. Feels like it did before. That was kind of awesome. Yeah, I think that's about its, the tightness it was before. Crank to get number one at top dead center. I just went around a couple times. useful in some way and the last step is paint your wheels green.